Hello everybody, this is another video for the course, or the, the PAX course, and uh, this time I want to show you another very useful utility that is called the GetPot and uh, can be used uh, to provide your code uh, uh, parameters that uh, have to be changed uh, from uh, run to run in a very easy way. Again, uh, GetPot, uh, um, as a GNU plot in the previous video, is a rather complex uh, type of uh, system, uh, type of uh, feature, but uh, um, it is very u uh, simple to use uh, at the beginning, and uh, you can learn the more advanced feature later on when uh, it is needed. And uh, the, again, I start uh, with uh, with the home page, getpotsourceforge.net, where you already find a lot, a lot of examples and a lot of instruction and uh, really a full, a full documentation. Actually, this is the, this is the actual home page. What I was showing before is indeed the documentation that is online, so you can just browse through it uh, until you find uh, what you need. But to understand how it works, I think the simplest thing is uh, to look at an example. And in this example, we will also see a more advanced use of GNUplot. If you don't know what GNUplot is, uh, please uh, look uh, at the video where I gave a very quick introduction to GNUplot. So this uh, is uh, the directory that you find uh, once you have downloaded uh, the, the, um, the GitHub site, uh, the GitHub repo with the examples. This is what you will find. And there is a directory called examples. So you see it here. So let's go into examples. Into examples, you find many things. But you then you go to SRC, sources. And again, in sources, you find a lot of examples. The examples we are concerned now is example eat exchange. In this example, you have also a file um, it exchange dot tech uh, and if you do make uh, it exchange it exchange sorry <laughs> dot pdf i think you pr you uh, well you have to do it twice uh, um, when that doesn't really matter, you find a description of what this program does. Okay, so you can look uh, at it exchange.pdf. In fact, it's just uh, it solves uh, with a finite element method a 1D probe hit uh, uh, conduction problem. Problem that is, if you're very simple, uh, a simple Poisson problem. Okay, here you find the description of what it does, but at the moment I'm not really concerned about uh, what uh, uh, the example does, but uh, in uh, the use uh, of uh, GetPot. Okay, so let's first look at the main program. Huh? If we look at the main program, we find an interesting thing. First of all, a little function that just prints an help. Okay? And if you see, this help just says that uh, the use of the program is to type main, that is the name of the program, and then some possible option, minus h, just print this help, minus v will give some verb verbose output, and you can specify a parameter file that by default is called parameters.pot. Now, this is very interesting because uh, you can, in C++ uh, and in C and in many other languages, give uh, options to your program. So your program, when it's launched, can parse the option. 
And in particular, the, the options here is minus h, minus v, and minus p. And minus p is an option that takes the name of the file. So it takes a string after the option. And the name is the file that contains the value of the parameters for the program. So this helps me in showing you the first use of getpot. Very useful is to parse the option you are passing to a file, to a program. Because parsing those options uh, with a getopt program, uh, getpot uh, is a play of word, uh, the original program that is, uh, in fact, a C, uh, is already in the C language, and also in C++, is called uh, getopt, get options. But getopt is very complicated. Getpot is much, much, much simpler. And I'll show you. If you want to use get, get, uh, getpot to process the option you're passing to your program, what you can do, first of all, is to, to specify that mains takes these two arguments. You know that main can, in C++ at least, can take either no argument or two arguments. If it takes two arguments, the first is an integer and the second is a pointer to a pointer of char. Okay? Now, what you have to do then, of course, you have to include a get pot huh? that is provided with examples so you don't have to download it yourself. You already have it. You create an object of type get pot. That is called, C, that I call it CL. You can call it as you want, of course. And you pass as a, in the constructor as argument exactly argc and argv. This is the only place in the whole program where you use argc and argv. You're just passing them to a getpot object. Then this getpot object will store all uh, the content in argc and argv, argc and argv will actually argv will contain uh, the the string passed to the to the program when you have launched it. So the options, uh, and uh, you can interrogate the options. A very important uh, command is search. So if you search a get pot object you are searching if one of the option passed have got a certain, uh, correspond to a certain uh, string. In particular, I am saying search into CL if there are two possibilities, two possible options. One is minus H and one is minus minus help. If uh, the options if I pass the, uh, to the program either minus h or minus minus help when I've launched the program, then uh, this will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. If it returns true, it means that I want the help. So we'll just call print help and I will terminate the program. Very, very, very simple. Again, I want to see if I've asked to be verbose, to have more output from my program. And uh, I know that verbose is minus V. I've chosen minus V as the option for verbose. So I search. One means that there is only one, one uh, uh, substring to search. And I will search minus V. If uh, minus V was specified in the input, this will be true. And so verbose will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. And now, this is the other very important, one of the most important command uh, method of a getpot uh, object. Follow. Follow means, uh, look, uh, you have to look again for a possible option. Uh, but uh, this option is followed by a string. It is the case of minus p, right? Minus p is an option that specifies the parameter file 
So after the options minus p, you either have uh, equal the name of the file or a space and the name of the file. The name of the file is a string, so I must be able to capture the name of the file, so that string. And this is what does cl.follow. cl.follow looks if there is this option. If this option is present, then it will look to the string that follows, or the string that follows the possibility. I can also use minus p equal and the name of the file, okay? I can use a space or equal to separate the option to the name of the file. If it finds a file, it will return it and it will store in file name. What is the first argument? The first argument is the default. If minus p is not present, cl follow will return parameters dot pot. That is the default file where my program reads the parameters. Okay? And then, okay, once I've read the parameters, I read the parameters and I read the parameters from uh, a function that, 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 uh, I've seen, uh, that I've created. Now, before looking at the function, let's look at the parameter file. So let's look at parameter.pot and see what is inside. Oh, you see, it's a very simple, this is the very simplest uh, but very useful uh, way uh, of passing data with getpot. Because, you see, we have uh, a set of parameters, iter max, the maximum number of iteration, tolerance, a tolerance for my the, the stopping criteria for the iterative procedure that is used inside the program, the length of the bar where I'm going to solve my problem, the, the first dimension of the bar, the second dimension of the bar, and so and so. Everything that starts with a hash, like here, is a comment. Very useful. In this file, I can put comment. So, I will be able to forget, to remember, after one year, uh, what uh, is inside this file. And then uh, I have uh, a set of parameters in the form parameter name equal the value I want to give. Parameter name equal the value. Parameter name equal the value. Remember that uh, since uh, I'm not specifying the type, uh, the type will be deduced by the literal constant uh, that follows the equal sign. So this literal constant is an integer, so n m max will be an integer. This integral constant uh, is uh, a float, uh, actually it's a double, so taller will be a double. Okay? That's why I put a dot here because I want this 40 to be interpreted as a double, not as an integer. If I don't put the dot, it will be interpreted as an integer, okay? And so L will be an integer, while L, in this case, the bar length is a double. Again, A1 is a double, A2 is a double, T0, T, K, all the others are double. M, instead, is an integer, 11, the number of elements. Mm. It's a finite element program, so I can specify the number of elements I want to use to solve my program, to solve my problem. Now, let's look now at the file read parameters. And a useful, a usual, as usual, first we look at the header file. Well, the header file is very simple. Just said the read parameters return parameters, and parameter is a structure that just will contain the parameters, huh? and it takes as an input uh, the name of the file and possibly another flag that just says if uh, verbose, if I want to print on the screen some uh, further information about the parameters I'm reading. Okay? But let's look now at the source file where we have the real stuff, where we have the definition. First of all, okay, again, I'm using a pot here. 
First of all, I'm just checking. This is all very useful. Eh? Do it every time. Check if the file name, if the file exists and is readable. So you open the file and then uh, you check the status of your stream. It's very simple. You can check the status of the stream just like this. Eh? It's very simple. Eh? You can use the method bad or fail or good. Uh, the, the, I, the input and output streams in C++ have got methods to return whether the stream is in a good state or not, but you can check it la just like that. If not check converts to true, it means uh, that check that this uh, file stream is uh, uh, something wrong, and so I will just uh, print an error and uh, I will return the defaults because they have some defaults for the parameters, okay? Defaults is just a structure that contains uh, the default value for the parameters. We're gonna sh show you that in a while, but uh, at the moment I want to concentrate on getpot, not on the details of the program. Okay, now once uh, I've uh, got the file, what I can do? Well, I now I, 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 uh, I create an object of type getPot, but different from before, I will pass a string, a C string, file name is a C++ string, while uh, the constructor of a getPot object wants uh, a C string, so I have to use the method C underscore str. Mm -hmm. So I pass the string that contains the name of the file. What does getPot do? GetPot will open this file, and this file, remember, by default, is a parameter dot pot that we have just seen, will parse the file, will recover all the information that it is in the file that we have just seen, and all the information is now stored in this getPot object that, has co that I've called iFile, but you can call it as, as you want, of course. Okay, so now the file will be open and closed. I will not use any more of the file. Everything that was in the file is now stored inside iFile in a very nice uh, structure, easy to interrogate. And now I got, uh, now I have to read the parameters. So, and actually I'm not anymore reading actually the parameter, I'm interrogating the getPot object, okay? The parameters are read when I created the getPot object, okay? Now they're all into a file. In a certain structure, I don't know how, how it is organized, is a getPot business. Okay, so I will store everything into values, and now you see I have uh, just, to in, in this case, uh, to interrogate uh, my getPot object uh, is very simple because uh, I can use directly the call method. So I just have to put brackets. I just have to put brackets and put the name, the string that contains the name of the um, of the parameter I want to read from the file, iter max, as you remember, it, it was one of the parameters in the file, and as a second argument, a default value. I remember default value is stored in another structure where I store all the default values. If I don't say anything in my file, if I do not specify iter max in my file, I have a default in any case. Okay? So, I will read from the getPost structure the value of ethermax. If ethermax is not present, I will get the defaults. The value that is returned will go in values ethermax. So at the end, values dot ethermax will either contain the default if uh, if uh, the string ethermax was not in the getPod file or the value that was specified in the getPot file. And then I repeat for all, for all of them, OK? 
okay? And of course, if it is verbose, I will just print uh, uh, some, some content. But, uh, and now let's see how it works. Now I have compiled, already compiled the code, okay? To compile the code, you just have to type make, but I've already compiled with for you. And uh, what I can do, I can, I can launch main with minus h. If I launch a main with minus h, I get the help. You remember? Hmm? The command line is parsed and it finds that it, there is a minus h, so it prints the help. Of course, I can specify the parameter file. I don't need to specify the parameter file because uh, uh, this uh, is the default. Mm, Parameters.pot is the default, but if I want, I can specify it. And the program runs. And I have a GNU plot window here. How it happened? We are going to see it in a moment. Okay? So this is the result with the values that I've put in my parameters.pot file. Now, let's suppose that I want to change the parameters. I want to use, uh, instead of 11, I want to use 21 finite, uh, finite elements. Well, I can copy parameters.pot into um, example.pot. I edit examples.pot. And here, instead of 11, I put 21. Huh? Let's suppose that this is the only thing that uh, that I'm changing, hmm? and now I can show I can call main instead with parameters dot pot with example pot, and let's put also minus v verbose so we are going to see something more. Huh? Okay, you see with the verbose it will tell you the parameters in the get pot file will then pr uh, will print out, and you can check. That now m is 21, but you can also see in the solution, if you remember the old solution, now you have many more points here, huh? because now I'm using 21 elements instead of 11. Okay? Okay, the last thing that I want to show you is how I do have, uh, how it is possible that uh, when I launch the program, I have a get pot window opening up. First of all, however, before doing that, I want to show you that uh, the code, this code, produces a file that is called result.dat. If I see, if I look what is in the result.dat, it's just uh, some values, okay, that represent uh, the coordinates, the solution computed by the program, and the exact solution, since for this uh, very simple program, I already know the exact solution, so I can compute the error. And in this file, you also find uh, a little script, plot.nu, that is just a very simple GNU plot script. So, if I want to, so, to see the result I've produced, I can just call gnuplot with the name of the file. This, if you remember, if you, the, what the, does this file say? Let's, have, let's, let's edit so it is a bit bigger. What does it say? Plot what? Now, in my previous lecture on GNU plot, uh, uh, you have seen plot uh, sinus of x, plotting a function. You don't want to plot a function, I want to plot some data. Where is the data? The data is in the file result.dat. And what I want to use of result.dat? I want to use the first and the second column with lines point, so I want to plot it lines with also the points, with the title UH, since these will be coordinates, first row, first column, sorry, second column, the computed solution. And then, comma, 
I want on the same plot, on the same plot, so not on a different plot, take again the result from that, so take again the data from the result from dot that, but now using, U stands for using, is just a shortcut for using, one, three. So using the first column, coordinate, the third column, exact solution, with line, without the dots in this case, and the title will be UX. And then pause minus one tells Gnuplot to pause, otherwise it will return. Okay? And you will just see for a microsecond the image of the plot, and that's it. So you need is equivalent of weight uh, in uh, um, in freefem. So see if I do GNU plot. Plot dot GNU, I see exactly what the, I'm I've seen with the program. So I'm just plotting again. Huh? See what it's very useful to have uh, the script stored in a file, because if I want now to change something, I just will edit the script. For instance, I want the, width, the lines uh, with a different width. I don't like them with this... Um, I will say line width. I put it here. Line points with line width 2. And here I want line width Okay, so I just save, exit, I launch again GNU plot. Now you see the lines are thicker. Hmm? So very convenient to have scripts. Much better having scripts than playing with uh, points and click. Huh? Okay, but uh, now you're still left with uh, no, uh, with the need of knowing how it is possible that main, my program, that is a C++ program, already plots on the screen. So it colors new plot from inside. Well, let's have a look. Okay. Well, everything is done at the, at, at the end when I computed the solution, and it is here. Now, let's uh, understand a little bit this for loop. This for loop uh, just computed uh, compute, uh, the coordinates. This, this is the for loop where I produce the result dot dot file, okay? And uh, m dot h dot l is nothing else than the coordinate. Okay, so m dot h dot l is uh, the coordinate uh, in my 1D program. My uh, 1D problem you know, is the x coordinate. This is the solution. Uh, S T E multiplied by this factor because of this, uh, uh, the problem is solved in uh, a dimensional variable, so I, I have to put it back in dimensional form. So this is the, is the, the solution, uh, the solution computed for each m, so at each point of my finite element grid, and this is the exact solution. So this is just the production of the final result of that. Here, I want to show, this is a very nice thing, that at the same time, I'm creating three, uh, three vectors, one called core, one called sol, one called exact, Co all contains uh, the coordinate, sol contains the solution that is computed, and exact is, contains exact solution. And this uh, and, uh, is a clever use of the method tie, so that in just one go, you do three things, okay? You create a tuple that contains uh, the coordinate, the value, the exact value, and then you just copy them to core m, sol m, and exact m in just one go. Uh, this is a nice trick of using tie for this purpose. Uh, otherwise, you can do it, you have to write more. Uh, so this is a very fast way. 
So now core, sol, and exact are three vectors that contain the coordinate, the solution, and the exact solution. Okay. This is uh, a nice way, it's one of the possible ways, there are many, of using GNUplot IO stream. GNUplot IO stream, you can find you can find uh, the the description into uh, in the home page of Nuplot. Huh? So if you go here and you go to external links among the different things you find, uh, so many Gnuplot mode uh, program interfaces. Here it is. C++ IO stream interface. You go here and you have all the instruction with a lot, lot, lot of examples. Okay, not, not a lot actually, but uh, the examples you need. Huh? So, but you can take also this uh, file as an example. How do I produce a GNU plot uh, uh, picture directly from the program? I will uh, create an object of type GNU plot. You see here is an object of type GNU plot that is defined in, uh, in gnuplot io stream that's why uh, you have to include uh, the header file and uh, you just fill uh, this object with the command you want to use in gnuplot so you want to plot okay what do you want to plot well you have uh, you want to plot the coordinate and the solution now this is another interesting way of uh, of using tie because you have to use the method file 1d that they that wants an input uh, a tuple of the two columns okay th that represent the, the x and y coordinate the, the x coordinate and y coordinate of the points uh, you want to plot so you need to tie together coordinate and solution and pass it to GP through this method, file 1D. Then uh, these are the options with line point title UH. Be careful about uh, uh, the quotes. Uh, UH must be in single quotes, the string double quotes. Comma, because I want to plot another thing in the, on the same plot, what do I want to plot? I want to pull out core and exact. Again, tie together in a tuple. Pass, pass it to GP file 1D. Remember the tie just creates a tuple, creates a tuple of reference. So you want a tuple that contains two vectors, but you don't want to copy the vector. With tie, you automatically create a tuple of two elements in this case, so it is a pair, in fact. Uh, you can use a pair if you, uh, instead of a tuple. I mean, a tuple with two elements is a pair, but uh, with references, so you don't use up more memory. You just, the, I'm using directly core and exact without making copies. And then again, with line title UX. That's it. This, all this is needed to create the plot. The plot is automatically then created. You want to change the line width because, uh, let's do it here, huh? with line points, line width two, and again, line width two, huh? because we want the lines a little bit thicker, then uh, save it, close it, make, I said the bug equal no because I want uh, optimization, even if it's not so needed. Huh? Okay. I run again main with example.pot, for instance, so with 21 points. And now you see the lines are thicker than before because I'm using two instead of one. Huh? So I have a slightly thicker line. Remember that when you are in this uh, little window, you can export. You can export to PDF, 
you can export to SVG, you can export as an image, you can copy it on the clipboard, and so put it directly in uh, wherever you want. And you can also zoom in. Hmm? You can zoom with also with the mouse, I suppose. Yes, no. Oh, sorry. You have to zoom in. Next zoom. Doesn't want to do it today. Maybe it's getting tired. But you can add, uh, well, probably when you launch it uh, with uh, with new plot IO stream, you don't have the full facilities that you have when you launch it with uh, with uh, just GNU plot. Okay, if you launch it with new plot, as we've seen before, then uh, you can also operate on the window, creating a grid, zoom in. Now I have only a piece of the curve. You can. Uh, uh, you can do things like changing the background. I don't see the change. Yes, you can change the background color. You don't want it. Select. Okay. Hmm. So now it's green. <laughs> you can do a, f a few things and then you can create the file. Hmm. There is another way without using the term and output uh, command of Nuplot that I was showing to you in the previous video. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Have a look at uh, the page of, of uh, GetPot, because GetPot can do a lot of other things, in particular the data that you have, uh, uh, that you want to, to give to your program can be organized in groups. This is very useful, so you can, uh, if you have many data that you have to give to your program, many parameters, eh? many parameters that you have to give to your program, you can organize them in groups. You can also give us parameter strings. You can also give vectors. Eh? You can also specify small vectors. Uh, and everything is uh, in the in the web, um, in the help. Let's see if I can get here. Here it is. Bring it back. You can do a lot, uh, a lot of stuff, uh, and really is very, very well documented. You find everything. You just have to try. You see all uh, the search command. Uh, it's very similar to what I've I've shown already, uh, and um, it's really very, very, uh, very complete. Very, very complete. So, of course, uh, uh, and there's plenty of examples. Of course, I cannot, uh, in, in just a video, explain you much more. But uh, remember, if you have to pass parameters to your code, parameters that you plan to change from call to call, uh, and this is what uh, happens very frequently, think about using GetPot to parse your file it's because parsing a file with parameters inside is something that is complicated and difficult okay so get get opt is for files that contains parameters eh? that uh, um, not for raw data file eh? files that contains uh, uh, millions of information eh? but uh, for files that contains parameter like the one we have seen uh, uh, it is very very convenient and i suggest you to use it